Turn your ears, O God, our shield, and look on the face of your anointed one. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Judges. All the citizens of Shechem and all Beth Milo came together and proceeded to make Abimelech king by the terebinth at the memorial pillar in Shechem. When this was reported to him, Jotham went to the top of Mount Gerizim, and standing there, cried out to them in a loud voice, Hear me, citizens of Shechem, that God may then hear you. Once the trees went to anoint a king over themselves. So they said to the olive tree, Reign over us. But the olive tree answered them, must I give up my rich oil, whereby men and gods are honored, and go to wave over the trees? Then the tree said to the fig tree, Come, you reign over us. But the fig tree answered them, Must I give up my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to wave over the trees? Then the tree said to the vine, Come, you, and reign over us. But the vine answered them, must I give up my wine that cheers gods and men and go to wave over the trees? Then all the trees said to the buckthorn, Come, you reign over us. But the buckthorn replied to the trees, If you wish to anoint me king over you in good faith, come and take refuge in my shadow. Otherwise, let fire come from the buckthorn and devour the cedars of Lebanon. The word of the Lord. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. O Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. In your victory, how greatly he rejoices. You have granted him his heart's desire. You refuse not the wish of his lips. For you welcomed him with goodly blessings. You placed on his head a crown of pure gold. He asked life of you, you gave him length of days forever and ever. Great is his glory in your victory, majesty and splendor you conferred upon him. You made him a blessing forever, you gladdened him with the joy of your face. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah. The word of God is living and effective, 
able to discern the reflections and thoughts of the heart. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. He said to them, you too, go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, he found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too, go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. We are all laboring in the vineyard of the Lord. Today's parable, this gospel, reminds us that each and every one of us, in our own way, we are sent at the beginning of the day, now here, we are among those who have arisen early and are now going about our business, the tasks that lay before us just for this day, one day at a time, every day a gift. But indeed, all of the labor that we will engage in today All the things that we will need to take care of, fulfill, get caught up on, all the things, maybe it's meetings, correspondence, all the events, just for this day. Today's gospel reminds us that although we may not have thought about it when we woke up this morning, now we can think about it. God has chosen us and is sending us into his vineyard, which of course is the world, the world in which we live. And we think, you know, when we think about praying for those who would be sent into the vineyard for gathering the harvest, usually that refers to like praying for vocations, specifically like for the priesthood and religious life. And that's true. And of course, that's specific as well. Send laborers into your vineyard so that they may gather the harvest, right? For those who in the official ministry of the church exercise that particular role. But today's parable really reminds us and our reflection does as well, that it really applies to all of us. We are all sent by God into his vineyard to labor for the glory of God, the salvation of souls, the building of the kingdom, the things that you are reminded of regularly here from this pulpit. And that's so beautiful that we are reminded regularly of our responsibilities and our duties as those who labor for the Lord in his vineyard. And that labor sometimes is exhausting, sometimes it is challenging, sometimes it is even frustrating, but in all things, we never give in to discouragement because we know that the Lord is with us. We are doing His work, and that's where we find our peace and our strength. That's why we persevere day after day after day, because it is the Lord's work. Even if it's just in your own home, at your job, school, wherever you may be, 
places and situations that are not necessarily, you know, sacred. We make them sacred by the way in which we approach our daily life. Every moment, in fact, although we're not really, like, literally praying to God at every moment of our day, when we begin our day with prayer, when we take those moments throughout the day, take a pause, take a little break, say a little prayer. Prayer throughout the day is the way in which you know, that labor that we are engaged in knows that by God's grace it is blessed, it will bear fruit, we will see in God's providence, even in the challenges that we face, opportunities always. We are building his kingdom. We are laboring in the vineyard of the Lord in every circumstance, in every way, even though, again, we may not specifically and explicitly think about that. But that's why we are all laboring for the usual daily wage, right? Sometimes the parable, like in our just, if we're reading it, hearing it proclaimed, we can just sort of think about like the aspect of, well, you know, those that arrived early got the same pay as those who arrived at five o'clock in the afternoon. It seems a little bit unjust, right? But that aspect of the parable, right? The landowner says, I am not being unfair. Did you not agree to the usual daily wage? Are you envious because I am generous, right? Those aspects of the parable remind us that, indeed, we should not be thinking, really, about the repayment, the wage. We leave that up to God. Our duty is to focus on the work itself and the joy that it should bring for us in our commitment to the Lord. And that's really why, in the parable, it really does refer to all of us. All of us, we, we know God is generous. We know God is just. We know God is merciful. We leave the, the payment, the usual daily wage, we leave that aspect to his discretion, discernment, and decision. Our duty here really is to focus on the task at hand. And what a beautiful task it is to worship God as we are right now in spirit and truth, to spend this time in this place which is sacred, which is holy, which is dedicated to God, so that we may be refreshed and strengthened so when we go forth from this holy place to wherever your tasks and labor will take you today, you will know God is with you, God's grace accompanies you, your prayer will give you strength and peace and consolation each and every day. This is the reality that we live, and that's where we find our peace and joy in serving the Lord. So may God bless all of your labors today, wherever that may be, and however that may be, a beautiful way for you to consider the beautiful lessons of today's gospel. God has chosen us, and let us labor faithfully and fruitfully for the Lord. As we offer this sacrifice of praise, let us bring our needs and our intentions to our loving Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests, that they may continue to preach the truth of the gospel with wisdom, courage, and love, let us pray to the Lord. For all government leaders, may they also be inspired by God's wisdom as they care for their people according to God's laws, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick or suffering, especially we pray for Cardinal Raymond Burke, dear friend to our Norbertine community, that he may be healed, preserved, and protected by God's grace. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish community, may God continue to unite us in Christ and give us strength to labor in his vineyard for the good of souls. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially for the repose of the soul of Patty Kennedy, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they may be welcomed into the fullness of joy with all God's saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, we thank you for entrusting to us the work in your kingdom. Hear and answer these prayers, which we make with confidence through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you and all the redeemed praise you. And all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton, as assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For then we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just a brief announcement. This coming Saturday, we will have another visit from the pilgrim statue of Our Lady of Fatima, as was the case several months ago. So the statue and the representatives to lead the prayers will be here Saturday, again, before the morning 8 a.m. Mass. The statue will be here in the sanctuary throughout the day. We do have the usual schedule of, you know, Saturday activities, baptisms, a wedding in the afternoon, but the statue will be here all day on Saturday so that you can come visit throughout the day for those prayers. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us and be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Hail, Holy Queen, enthroned above, O Maria. Hail, Mother of mercy and of love, O Maria. Triumph for ye cherubim, sing with us ye seraphim heaven and earth resound the hymn salve salve salve